I'm making this video way too soon. Um, and I've been really, really depressed over the past two days after the Rangers lost in game seven against the New Jersey Devils. Um, and the Rangers season is over. If you guys know me, you know the Rangers are a really big part of my life. I have no quit in New York right there. I have a Rangers neon sign right there. I have a New York Rangers snow globe on my desk. It's, and I have a lot of other things. I have a Henrik Lundqvist banner over there. Anyway, you get the point. I live and die by this team. Um, I'm not only a fan, I write for them. I write for them on a few sites. I obviously do my rants for them. And seeing their season end on Monday night the way it did really hurt. And I'll say my pure feelings after. But I first want to go through a few things because I owe you guys this video about how I'm feeling and what I saw not only as a fan but as a journalist. So let's get the thing straight. I posted a reaction video after games one and two and the Rangers were up two nothing after winning both games at the Prudential Center five to one and they just looked like leaps and bounds the better team than the Devils. The experience was there. They were fast. They were playing defense. They were doing exactly what they needed to do to beat New Jersey. And you get to game three, and the Rangers score the first goal off of a Chris Kreider goal, not on the power play. It's only not power play goal of this series. And then what changes? Um, Nico Heischer chokes Adam Fox, ignites the Devils. Timo Meyer falls into Igor Shesterkin. Shesterkin punches him, but at the, uh, he gets called for the roughing, and you can make an argument both ways. And that, in my opinion, is where the series turned because Jack Hughes scored the goal and the Devils, the power play goal to tie the game, and the Devils never looked back. The Rangers were the better team in the third and in overtime, and the Devils still took Game 3. And while we said that was a series, Games 4, Games 5, Game 6, even though the Rangers won, and Game 7, the Devils were the better team. The Rangers might have been the better team in Game 6 because they won 5-2. The Devils were so different offensively in Games 4, 5, 6, and 7. Game four, even though the Rangers stifled him a little, the Devils got two even strength goals off of one off a breakaway from Hughes and the other off a clean zone entry to Siegenthaler. And then they won that game. The Rangers couldn't score. Um, that's another thing that I'll just get to in a second. But game five and game seven, both four nothing losses for the Rangers was a combination of a lack of offense from New York with the offensive firepower of the Devils. And you know what the Devils were going to do and they did it. And it really hurts to watch. And that gets me to the next point, which is the Rangers' offense. The Rangers' offense was pretty brutal this series, to be honest, after games one and two. Um, game five, was they were good, but you can't go three. You can't go five games in the series, or four games. They had four games in the series scoring a goal or less, and that's those are the games they lost. The biggest thing for the Rangers this season, the Rangers were 32-0 and this year when they scored more than four goals. And in the three games they won this this series against the Devils, they scored more than four goals. If the Rangers scored in the way they could have, they absolutely could have won this series. The Rangers, I thought, were a better team than the Devils. I really do. I'm sure I could get a lot of negativity from that from Devils fans. But the this might have been the best talent, the best Rangers teams I've ever seen on paper, and I'm 20. When you have the top six of Mika Zibanejad, Artemi Panarin, Patrick Kane, the best American player e ever, Vladimir Tarasenko, Chris Kreider, Vincent Trocek, and then you have the kid line as your third line, you expect to win. And against the Devils team, which was probably a year away from contending, but we're wrong because they are a good team. They are a really good team. And Lindy Ruff has always been a decent offensive coach. Defense was his problem. It hurts. And so the, it's a massive disappointment for the Rangers. And that's um, that's putting it lightly. The season was a colossal failure for them. They were two wins away from the Stanley Cup final last year. They only got better and they lost in seven to a rival. Biggest underperformers, um, the offense. So starting with, um, I mean, it starts with Artemi Panarin. Artemi Panarin is being paid $11.5 a year. He had no goals in seven games. And while he had no goals in the first round last year against Pittsburgh, he scored the overtime winner. And he sent the Rangers to the next round, and then he was he was much better. He was pretty non-existent in this series. He only had one key, key pass, according to the NHL. And Artemi Panarin had 92 points, or 94 points this year. He's one of the best passes in the league. That can't happen. He's the best player on this team. That team goes as far as he does. Other underperformers. Everyone's going to talk about Patrick Kane. He's a trade deadline acquisition. Yes, he was incredible in Game 2. And he got points in games one and three, too. And then he was exactly what teams advertised him to be. He was a guy with a bad hit. And he um, was a bit of defensive liability. He was not the reason the Rangers lost this series. The Rangers' offense was the reason they lost this series. And you could talk all about Patrick Kane and how he didn't contribute after game three well. He played well in game seven. And I, um, when Artemi Panarin doesn't score, when Patrick Kane doesn't score, 
when Mika Zibanejad doesn't score until game six, when Alexi Lafreniere, the number one pick the year after Jack Hughes, only has or has no points in the playoffs, when Philip Heedle only has one goal, when Capococco only has one goal, and the kid line pronounces two points, you're going to lose to an offensive firepower. The Rangers' offense was the main reason they lost this series. And when I start talking about my stance from a fan, you'll see what I, why else they lost. But their offense, they got shut out two out of the last two games at the Rock. The two biggest games of the series, they got shut out by a 22-year-old goalie who the Devils dr drafted pretty much to be a developmental player. And Akira Schmidt's going to be a good goalie. Um, so props to him. Um, free agents, I feel like I'm going to do another video about this, but pretty much to put it lightly, Alexi Lafreniere should get a bridge contract. He'll be back, I, uh, barring anything surprising. I doubt anybody offers him offer sheet because offer sheet just isn't the game of the NHL right now. Kadri Miller played himself out of a big contract. He'll probably make 2.53 a year. And then it comes down to unrestricted free agents. Tyler Mott wants to come back. Vladimir Tarasenko wants to come back. I don't think they'll afford Tarasenko. I don't think they could afford a Patrick Kane, nor do I think the Rangers should take Patrick Kane back. I think Tarasenko's a different story. Maybe Tarasenko will take a pay cut. I think Nico Mikul has gone he was a great acquisition but you know the rangers they're gonna have run it back with the same core next year and i think um when it comes to success and how they could be successful next year um i'll do that in a different video but a lot of it comes from contribution from the lower six and just this core knowing what has to be done the rangers had a lot of good hockey left in them and i think that they just laid a dud against the devils especially after going up two nothing and last um my feelings as a fan this is going to come straight from the heart um first thing just I'm extremely disappointed um the Rangers playoff run last year when they came back from a 3-1 lead against Pittsburgh and then came back from a 2-0 lead against Carolina and blew that lightning lead even though they were up 2-0 they were two wins away from the Stanley Cup final one of the best playoff runs of my life one of the best sports moments of my life they really that last year the Rangers adopted the saying no quit in New York and they really meant that they led the league in comeback wins last season. They were third in the league this season. They really stand by that. And this series, the Rangers quit. The Rangers went up 2 nothing. I'm not going to say they got complacent, but they got out coach. Lindy Ruff out coach Gerard Gallant. This has always been the thing with Gerard Gallant. I'm not calling him for, for him to get fired. He has his limits. He's good for team morale. He's not very X and O's guy. He lets the players out there and does his own thing. These You saw this in Vegas. And you saw this with other teams that Gerlop has been around. And you see this with the Rangers. He got outcoached. Lindy Ruff outcoached Gerard Gallant. Right after the Rangers went down to, were up 2 nothing in the series, Lindy Ruff had his team in the film room picking out their playmakers and picking out the weaknesses in the Rangers. That's why Adam Fox had a bad series. That's why Keandre Miller had a bad series. That's why Panarin and Zabanachat had a bad series. And that's why the Devils got better offensively as time went on. The Rangers quit the series. And that's what hurts me most as a fan. And that's what should hurt most people as a fan. They have always said no quit in New York. They're up 2 nothing, and they lost 4 out of 5 to an arch rival. And they didn't only lose 4 out of 5 to an arch rival. They were coming home to the world's most famous arena, arguably the best home ice in hockey, especially come the playoffs, and they laid a dud. Not once, but twice. And the um, people on Twitter were putting this best. The Rangers fans were rooting for something to happen. They were dying for something to happen offensively, and it never came. Then in game four, they quit. They laid down. The Devils scored a goal 20 seconds in. The Rangers were the better team throughout the rest of the first. After that, it was all Devils, and the Rangers could not score. Game six, great. Your backs against the wall, they played great. And I was at that game. It was great to see the fight from the team. They don't go down easily. Game seven, they went down easily. 20, 10 seconds in to, the first, to game seven, right off the opening puck drop, Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider had a two-on-one. Zibanejad gets around his defender and then tr tries to, and or he gets around a defender and then, I forgot which defender it was, I think it was John Marino, um, slides, the puck goes to the net. The Rangers don't get a quality chance on Akira Schmidt. Akira Schmidt goes on to shut out the Rangers in the Game 7. The Rangers were 8-1 in Game 7s before that, and they got shut out by a 22-year-old goalie. The Devils were the better team for all 60 minutes, even on the power plays. The Rangers had three power plays in the first period, and they still couldn't capitalize. When that happened, I go, we're going to lose. They quit. The Rangers, the Devils wanted it more. They were younger. They were faster. They were first to pucks. They were shooting it at Igor Shesterkin. They knew he was a good goal, goal, goalie, but they still shot at him. And the Rangers quit. And that's what most disappointing because for the past two years, they went by the saying, no quit in New York. And in the most important game of their season, they quit. They looked like the worst team by far. And it was not only painful to watch as a fan, it was disappointing. 
And I'm sitting here really disappointed now because I should be talking about game one tonight against the Hurricanes. And you could talk about the East wide open, being wide open with Boston losing and Carolina being injuredly plagued. But it's the videos about the Rangers. And the New York Rangers on Monday night quit and let their fan base down. They're, um, Steve Valakat said it best. They're, they look like a bunch of stars on the ice, not a team. The Devils look like a team. The 2021-22 Rangers, the reason they got so far, they looked like a team. Frank Vitrano is not Frank Vitrano and Andrew Kopp are not better than Patrick Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko. You cannot tell me that ever. You will never be able to tell me that. What's the difference? They play defense. They were. I'm. I'm not gonna make the enjoyment thing because Kane. Everyone loved Ter Kane and Tarasenko here in terms of the locker room. They play defense, and this isn't. Uh, this is the bad part about Kane and Tarasenko's game. They were never advertised to be two way forwards, but they're stars, and that's it. Andrew Kopp and Frank Vitrano aren't stars, but. They scored, they were able to punch someone in the face, they were physical, and that's what the Rangers' identity was. It all go it goes back to 2020, when Tom Wilson shoved Artemi Panarin and gave him a concussion, and then he was out for the year, and that's why the Rangers brought in Ryan Reeves. And Ryan Reeves might have been fine in this series, he wouldn't have been fine in the terms of play, I think the Devils would have wiped him out with their speed, but Ryan Reeves would have went in, and he would have clocked Timo Meyer. And Jacob Truba clocked Timo Meyer. it was too late. Timo Meyer should have been taken out, out of the game or punched, or retaliated against after he fell on Igor Shesterkin in Game 3. But he was not until 9 minutes left in Game 7 when the Rangers were down 2 nothing. This New York team did not have the want to win. You can make that argument all you want, and they quit. And that's what most disappointing. And we can talk about next year, and we can talk about all that. I'll be writing all about next year soon, just as a fan, and how disappointed I am at this team, which has established itself as no quit in New York. First in the league in comeback wins last season. Third this season. They quit. They looked like the worst team in the most important game of their season. And it comes with a lot of consequences. And that's why I'm here making this really sad video. Because it hurts a lot. It really does. Um, I'll have more content out soon. I just really need to get this out. I'm really depressed still. And yeah. Um, forever and always, let's go Rangers. But um, still can't believe I'm making this. But I owe it to you guys.